That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. Okay, we're going to go through and talk about some buy low running backs for week 12. I'd imagine that the majority of people right now are the closing in on their trade deadlines. One thing that I will say, I, this mainly goes for dynasty fantasy football, but even in your regular redraft leagues, I mean, push that trade deadline as far back as you can. I mean, you want owners in your league as active as long as possible. Now, of course, if you see a trade go down of someone going through and trading Devontae Adams for Darnell Mooney, you step in, you go, okay, that's collusion. These people no longer need to be in the league. And we're clearly going to be reversing that deal. But if there are going to be trades making, I mean, just both rosters better, of course, feel free to go out there and do it. It's not the real life NFL. I mean, with fantasy football, we can have some fun here. But before we dive into anything, you know, we have to give away some free fantasy flock network cats as we do every single video. The winners for this video are going to be Jason and Jesse's. Thank you so much for coming out and dropping that like, leaving a comment on the last video. Every time you go down there, drop that like, leave a comment. You help us out in the YouTube algorithm. And I want to go through and I want to help you out by giving you that fantasy flock network cat through a giveaway. And of course, one other way, if you really want to support the channel, go sign up for underdog fantasy. When you sign up for underdog fantasy and you use promo code flock, your first deposit, they match you dollar for dollar on the deposit up to $100. Please take advantage of all the player props they have available over there. I mean, Thomas, can you throw up some of the player props for just Monday night that they have? They also have weekly fantasy drafts that you can get in. And now underdog fantasy is available in Louisiana as well. So it looks like underdog fantasy fantasy is available in pretty much every single state in the United States available in Canada. I mean, go through, use promo code flock, get that deposit match 100%. And yeah, I think that should be it. Let's go through. Let's dive into these running backs. Let's lead it off with James Robinson. Not going to waste any time here. Now with James Robinson, this was a running back that was limited this week. Now he was limited in practice. I don't want to be using that as an excuse for James Robinson by any means. Y'all know I'm not a massive fan of the talent profile of James Robinson by any means here, but nonetheless, I mean, you're looking at the workload that he has in Jacksonville. It's just very consistent this past week. I mean, you do have Carl Hyde seeing a decent amount of snaps, but one thing that I want to point out here is this game was done and over by the time you got to the second half. I mean, clearly the 49ers, I mean, I thought it was laughable that the spread on this game was only six, six and a half points. They were able to just stomp the Jacksonville Jaguars. I mean, their first drive, I was watching this game at the very beginning. Like their first drive literally took the time down to one minute left in the first quarter. I have never seen anything like it. They essentially just played keep away from the Jacksonville Jaguars throughout the entire game. Of course, that's going to hurt James Robinson. Now, like I said, he plays 29 snaps compared to Carlos Hyde's. And now if you're looking at Carlos Hyde's 14 snaps, you'd probably get a little bit worried about James Robinson the rest of the season. Now, this is a game that I just think that we can completely overlook. And even with Carlos Hyde getting those 14 snaps, he had a total of zero targets, a total of zero carries. James Robinson had every single one. And I know a lot of people are going to be coming out saying, well, Mason, uh, don't you know that James Robinson, I mean, this is someone that has a just really bad offensive situation that they're going to be out of a lot of games, just like we saw against the San Francisco 49ers. I understand that argument, but one thing I want to say is let's go through, let's look at the schedule that you have for the Jacksonville Jaguars. We already talked about this, but I want to be reminding everybody of the schedule that you have for the Jacksonville Jaguars during the fantasy football playoffs. Now, remember your playoffs this year, they shouldn't be in weeks 14, 15, and 16 as they are in years past because we had the extra weekend for the NFL schedule. So you're going to be playing them in weeks 15, 16, and 17. We've had a lot of people asking, well, what do you do in week 18? Well, what you do in week 18 is you sit back, you enjoy NFL. You don't go through and play fantasy because there are going to be a lot of teams just sitting there, star players, and a lot of those stud fantasy options just missing time because their team's playing for nothing. Now, if you're looking at James Robinson during that stretch, he has the Houston Texans and the New York Jets in weeks 15 and 16. Now I'll say, look, don't bother looking at his week 17 matchup. It's going to be brutal. But nonetheless, I should think that weeks 15 and 16 are going to be a little bit more important than week 17. So we can just make sure that we're getting to the fantasy football playoffs. We have some great matchups down the stretch. I mean, this upcoming week, you have them going up against the Atlanta Falcons. Now the NFL lines are not out as of the time I'm recording this on Sunday night. I'd be very interested to see in the spread in this game. I think it's actually probably going to be within a touchdown. I'd imagine that maybe they have the Jack 
Jacksonville Jaguars. I don't even know if they're going to be favored or not. I'd imagine it's two points one way or another. It'll be a competitive contest for James Robinson here against a soft Atlanta Falcons defense. Robinson still getting every single target out of the backfield. Robinson also getting every single touch in the red zone. And that's kind of what you need to look here for James Robinson. And it's been the same exact offense that he's been playing in throughout the entire season. And throughout the entire year, James Robinson has given us a very high floor. And one thing that I want to do with James Robinson and I think it's fair to do this. Please, if you think that it's unfair, if you think I'm just cherry picking stats, I would love to know your opinion in the comment section. But I know one thing that nobody's going to argue with me about, we can go through, you can look at week eight against the Seattle Seahawks. This was the game that James Robinson left early with the injury to his heel. We can take that game. We can toss it out the window. Never think about it again, because obviously his four fantasy points scored doesn't really predict anything that we have going forward, knowing that he left early with an injury. And I also think that we can go back to weeks one and two, at least week one. I'm not going to do it with week two, but I think we can go back to week one. where we only had five carries out of the backfield against the Houston Texans. Remember week one, Urban Meyer used Carlos Hyde as the starting running back here for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think we could throw that week out the sample as well to get a better idea of what we actually have for James Robinson so far this season. And if we're going to be making those adjustments, I mean, so far this season, he scored 139.7 fantasy points. Let's remove the 4.9 that we had against the Seahawks, as well as the 8.4 that we had against the Texans. And then outside of that, this is a running back that's played one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games. So if you're looking at a points per game basis, he's getting up there and he's getting close to about 18 and a half fantasy points on a points per game basis right up there next to Joe Mixon and Nick Chubb. I think that with James Robinson, if you're going to go over to Patreon and look at our rest of season rankings, I'm not going to be moving him down at all based on this really tough matchup that he had against the San Francisco 49ers, because my opinion really hasn't changed at all of what his role is in this offense, as well as the running back talent that he is. I currently have James Robinson ranked as the running back 13. And I think now that it looks like you'll be getting Kareem Hunt back in a few weeks, we'll talk about Hunt a little later on in the video. We can actually even consider moving James Robinson above Nick Chubb in a full PPR format. Now let's go over to our next grouping of running backs. And we're going to be like just going through and talking about an entire subsection of the running back position. And there's going to be the players that we included on the buy low list last week that were coming back from injuries. And y'all know, as we went through, made our start sit videos, we went through and did those live streams. These running backs like Clyde edwards alaire Miles Sanders, I mean, we were excited about trading for them on the low at the beginning of last week before people even realized that they were coming back and then being able to look at them with their long-term upside. Now, you weren't playing them because you weren't expecting them to come back their first week back from that injury and see their usual workload, and they didn't. I mean, with a player like Miles Sanders here, one thing that I will say, Jordan Howard suffers a knee injury at the end of this game. I mean, if Jordan Howard is going to miss a significant amount of time, bump up Miles Sanders because Jordan Howard actually started this game. Jordan Howard played 13 snaps and had 10 carries in those 13 snaps. But it looks like once you remove Jordan Howard, this is just the Miles Sanders show. Miles Sanders comes out, looks really impressive. He has 16 carries. And one thing that we talked about in trading for Miles Sanders a few weeks ago is the fact that if you're going through, if you're trading for Miles Sanders, I and mean, if he can get back to being the first and second down running back for the Philadelphia Eagles here, you probably have to be pretty excited because remember what was horrible about Miles Sanders and this role at the beginning of the season is he was the first and second down running back, but they were going through and they were just throwing the ball every single down. So it didn't really matter what Miles Sanders was as the first and second down running back. He has some decent matchup against, against the Giants and the Jets over the next two weeks. Now with Sanders, of course, you're not going out there and selling the farm for him. You're not going to go through and sell someone like Leonard Fournette for Miles Sanders. That would be atrocious. But we had a lot of people last week telling us Miles Sanders was available on their waiver wire. So I'd imagine that the asking price with Miles Sanders is you're going to be able to include him as a throw-in. Go through and swap a wide receiver and just get Miles Sanders added back onto that depth piece with the injury rate that we have seen at the running back position, especially if your trade deadline's coming up and we may not be able to go and backfill with a running back depth piece through trade in weeks 15, 16, Sanders could be appealing. Very similar to Clyde Roberts Lair. I mean, with CEH, y'all know, I mean, what have we been saying all week? With Clyde Edwards Lair in the long term in Kansas City, you're expecting him to work his way up to seeing about 65% of the snaps. Daryl Williams will still have a role, but this week in particular, we are expecting this to be a 50 50 backfield split between Clyde Edwards Lair and Daryl Williams. Say, one of the bets that we took on Underdog Fantasy this past week, it was hilarious that they had it like this, but we were able to take Clyde Edwards Lair plus 20 yards versus Daryl Williams. 
what? I, I mean, obviously we were able to print some money on that. Oh my gosh, we just made, this was the best week we've had on underdog fantasy in quite some time. But nonetheless, Clyde Woods Lair plays 32 snaps compared to Daryl Williams at 36. Doesn't really matter though, because when they're putting Clyde Woods Lair in the game, they're looking to get him the ball. He has 12 carries compared to Daryl Williams Five. I mean, he also gets a couple targets out of the backfield here as well. Clearly, this is an offense that you expect to be one of the more productive offenses in the NFL. So, Clyde edwards I think he continues to expand his role. I mean, I think that actually going forward, this is a running back that we can look to start. Very similar to Miles Sanders. I'm not telling you to go out there and pay up for Clyde edwards I would never even make the argument that Clyde edwards is a talented running back in football. But I would make the argument that this is going to be a good situation to be in. And that's kind of what we're chasing. And now he does have a bye week in week 12. And then after that, I mean, if you're looking at some of the matchups, he has the Raiders. I mean, they have had a very poor run defense so far this season. And the Chargers in weeks 14 and 15. And the Steelers obviously just gave up that monstrous performance to Austin Eckler. So there could be some intriguing spots to start Clatterbridge Lair down the line. Now, just as... Someone looking into their crystal ball here, right? I'm going to be looking in to see what we have in the future. As I'm recording this video on Sunday, I'm going to be very brief on this because I could be talking out of my ass right now. I'm going to include Saquon Barkley on this buy low running back video. Just like these other running backs, we were saying to buy Saquon Barkley coming into this week, knowing that he is most likely going to be a very, very disappointing. Like, please do not get your hopes up with Saquon Barkley. I mean, you're going to be watching this video tonight. Monday, Saquon Barkley will most likely be extremely disappointing against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If you look at what Las Vegas is currently telling us, I mean, Vegas right now is projecting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to just stomp the New York Giants. I'm expecting that Barkley in probably one of the toughest matchups in football is also not going to see his usual workload. I'm expecting him to only get 60 to 70% of the snaps here. And if that's going to happen and it's going to be a tough matchup, Barkley's probably not doing anything in fantasy. I mean, I was telling people to go through and start a running back. I hate to admit to this now because he gets injured and looks bad, but like Michael Carter over Saquon Barkley. Now, beyond that, he'll be playing the Eagles, the Dolphins, the Chargers. I mean, the Eagles again in week 16. So he has some really good matchups down the stretch. He can get up to working into 80 to 90% of his backfield snaps. Hopefully y'all are watching this laughing at me with how wrong I was. Hopefully Saquon Barkley comes back in. He gets 80 to 90% of the snaps in this backfield. I would be all here for it. But nonetheless, you can go down to the comment section. Let me know how stupid I am. Now let's go over to our next running back coming back from injury, not this week, but next week. So I'm going to be including him on this list now in case your trade deadlines this week and we have to make a play before next. But in reality, since he's going into the bye week, you can trade for him next week, just like what we should say with Clyde Edwards Lair as well. This is going to be Kareem Hunt. Now with Kareem Hunt, I mean, y'all know this was a running back that as soon as he got injured, a lot of people came out. They go, Mason, are we buying low on Kareem Hunt? Are we buying low on Kareem Hunt? No, you weren't. I, I mean, the reason is that with these injured players, for whatever reason, we've talked about this time and time again in fantasy football. It's the weirdest thing ever. I'm going to continue to be as loud as I can season after season about this to try to fix this in fantasy football because I think it's the honestly least efficient way to ever evaluate a player. And I will say as a quick flex real quick, considering I live stream every single night, three to four hours answering fantasy football questions. All I do all day is interact with people on Patreon, getting out podcasts and such. I think I have a better idea of the fantasy football marketplace than anybody else literally in the world. I'll say I'm definitely not the best fantasy football player in the world. I mean, I would be an ass if I tried to say that, but nonetheless, I mean, here, what I have found is when those players initially get injured, their value, it takes a small hit, but they're from, from there, you would expect every week they get closer to returning from that injury. It goes slightly higher and higher and higher and higher and higher till it's almost about what it was before the injury, right before they come back. Where in reality, what happens is people don't dock the player enough with their value after that initial injury. And so, I mean, with Kareem Hunt, say he loses 25% of his value. And from there, when he's not producing, as you expected him not to, you knew he was going to miss a significant amount of time. He just gets slightly less and less and less and less and less valuable as people kind of forget the running back that Kareem Hunt is. But with Kareem Hunt, the reason you love him in fantasy is the fact that he is getting just a massive workload as a receiving running back out of the backfield. 
and he is getting touches in the red zone. This is an elite offensive line, not to mention if you would have someone like Nick Chubb going down, all of a sudden Kareem Hunt becomes what Dearness Johnson was in those spot starts for Nick Chubb over the previous few weeks. So, I mean, I'm going to continue to say this as we did coming into the season, that Kareem Hunt is a significantly better value compared to Nick Chubb. I mean, y'all know with Nick Chubb, we were saying not to sell him. I mean, when he first was coming back from that injury because we were wanting that production in the lineup, then we were going to sell him before Kareem Hunt came back. So, don't be surprised when you get Nick Chubb in the sell high running back video tomorrow. But I think Kareem Hunt will be intriguing here because they have the Ravens this week. I'd imagine that against the Ravens, I mean, maybe Kareem Hunt misses. And then in the week 13 bye, that's when Kareem Hunt should get fully healthy and he should be good to go in week 14 against the Baltimore Ravens. Now, speaking of the Baltimore Ravens, let's go over to a running back that just went up against them and just failed horrendously it's going to be David Montgomery and with David Montgomery I told a ton of people to go through and play David Montgomery y'all know I'm not a fan of David Montgomery's talent profile I've never really been a massive fan of David Montgomery's talent profile but at the end of the day I was coming out here saying okay well if he's going to get a guaranteed 20 touches in this offense I think you have to be very excited about what we will have with David Montgomery well I mean that just simply doesn't happen he only gets one target out of the backfield only getting one target out of the backfield is kind of laughable here, and it definitely has to lower your expectations going forward. But outside of this, we can just acknowledge the fact that the Baltimore Ravens have one of the toughest run defenses in the entire NFL. The Chicago Bears offense just completely failed. And if there's ever going to be a spot for this offense to be able to move the ball effectively down the field, it's going to be over the next few weeks. I mean, they are going to have the Detroit Lions in week 12. If we go back to what we had with David Montgomery previously against the Detroit Lions this season, you actually had 23 carries, 106 rushing yards, and two rushing touchdowns at the same time. Then, I mean, he got injured, so maybe we would have even been in store for a bigger game there with David Montgomery. Also, when we get closer to the fantasy football playoffs, he has some intriguing matchups against the Minnesota Vikings as well as the Seattle Seahawks. Neither team have shown to be that great against the run so far this season. And maybe if we get Andy Dalton coming in, if this injury does linger for Justin Fields, that could be a good thing for this entire offense. I know, I mean, obviously Justin Fields is the future in Chicago compared to Andy Dalton. We've gotten enough people wanting to kill me for my hate of Justin Fields for pretty much the past 12 months. But nonetheless, I mean, I think that with Andy Dalton, he would check the ball down slightly more than what you would have with Justin Fields. And at the same time, I think David Montgomery can work his way back into getting 20 plus touches every single week. Now, our last running back here, he's probably going to be a candidate for making our list of just the most frequent by low running back. So if we don't get the breakout at the end of the season, it's going to be very embarrassing. But Javante Williams, now hear me out with Javante. Let's go through. Let's look at what we had this past week. And of course, I did not have him on our buy low video this past week because with Javante Williams, this was a running back going into a buy. I didn't really feel the need to go out there and put him on that list. But what you love about Javante Williams is the schedule going forward. Even to not speak on the fact that I'm expecting Javante to continue to increase his role and to take more and more touches away from Melvin Gordon. Trust me. I would have assumed that Javante Williams would have taken over as the starting running back. I mean, what we were thinking coming into the year was he took that job about by week nine, week 10. Well, week nine, week 10, they've come and they've gone. And right now it looks like Malvin Gordon is still the 50-50 backfield leader with Javante Williams in Denver. But this past week against the Philadelphia Eagles before the bye, Melvin Gordon fumbled the ball and it was a fumble six. So I think that here, maybe the coaching staff goes, okay, well, if Melvin Gordon, the veteran running back who's supposed to not be making mistakes, if he is going to go out there and give us those costly fumbles and cost us some losses, I mean, they're going to the bye week. Maybe they evaluate just how damn good Javante Williams has been so far this season. Now I know, trust me, I get it. Yards per carry is one of the worst statistics to evaluate running backs by. If you're looking at, I mean, a yards per carry number and you're saying that, okay, running back X has a yards per carry of 5.3, running back Y has a yards per carry of 4.2, running back X is better than running back Y. That is the way that an eight-year-old observer of the NFL, I mean, someone who's 12 years old playing fantasy football, that's their initial thing that they're going to look to do. There are so many different variables going into the yards per carry statistic. Obviously, it's not a sound way at all to evaluate running backs. Now, with that being said, he has had over five yards of carries so far this season. He has had 105 carries and over 500 rushing yards. I think with Javante Williams, he has a top three fantasy football playoff schedule at the same time. 
So there is that outside chance. If he can just increase that role, if he can get 50% of the backfield that Melvin Gordon was occupying and turn this from a 50-50 backfield split to a 75-20 backfield split, and he has one of the best schedules of any running back that you're going to find going forward, I still think Javante Williams has a ton of upside to continue to increase his fantasy football value. And yeah, that's all I got for y'all. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope you got something from it. Please go down there, drop that like on the video, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. And of course, go sign up for Underdog Fantasy. When you sign up for Underdog Fantasy and use promo code FLOCK, they match you dollar for dollar on that deposit up to $100. Like we said, it's now available in Louisiana, available in pretty much every single state, not named Washington State. I believe Nevada, um, Wyoming and like Hawaii outside of that. I think we should all be good. And of course, drop that like, leave that comment, get a fantasy vlog network at. Thank you again. I hope we see you out in the live stream tonight. And let's hope we get a big game from our guy, Saquon Barkley. Probably is not going to happen though this week in particular. We'll probably have to wait until week 12.